Here's a new oil painting I'm embarking on. It's a commission for a fella. It's 20 by 24. This is my first phase stage, rather, which is uh, pencil and some colored waterproof ink, sepia colored ink. So um, I'm going to have a moon in here also. I forgot to put that in. Put that about here. So the compass. There you go. So it'll be a uh, watery, moody, um, shoreline sort of scene. And uh, we'll come back to it later. Here's the second phase on this painting. Uh, mixed to monochromatic sort of uh, source color, earth color, mother color uh, is a good word for it. It's a combination of ultramarine blue, uh, cadmium orange, and uh, Payne's gray. So the gray neutralizes everything. So I'm wor working from a point of values. I'll begin to add color, uh, pushing the blue towards green and towards uh, yellow, purple, other colors like that. Here's a new book I picked up, and I'm uh, <clears throat> not necessarily keeping up with comics, uh, modern comics, but uh, Dick Breaker, Briefer's Frankenstein I had known something about, and uh, took a look at this uh, book. Now apparently he uh, worked in the 40s and 50s. He, uh, there he is. He uh, had two versions <clears throat> of Frankenstein. Uh, one was sort of a more serious one, and the other one was uh, goofier and cartoonier. Well, I really enjoyed the goofy, cartoony stuff. This one's good, Frankenstein's Wife. And it's got a lot of humor in it, a lot of fun visuals. Uh, really funny stuff. Poopsie, this soup is wonderful. You are superb. Oh, Mousy, you say the nicest things. I don't deserve it. Sounds like uh, our house here. But uh, I got to return the book to the library, but before I did, I, I went ahead and read everything. I read the more serious stories, and it's funny, there's a parallel sort of story here with uh, the She Monster. It's like the, it's a serious version of The Bride of Frankenstein. And uh, she wants a baby, she steals a baby. Uh, but she's too dangerous. She wants to kill everybody for fun. Uh, sound familiar? And so anyway, so they give her a, a doll with a bomb in it, and that's supposed to take care of her. But uh, it's a really handsome book, and um, if you don't know anything about Briefer, I don't know what those old comics are worth these days. But uh, probably do pretty well uh, getting the book. But, uh, you know, I'll probably get the thing, too, myself. Uh, also, speaking of Milton the Monster, uh, this scene here of uh, the monster, uh, the gentle Frankenstein monster sniffing flowers, it certainly does seem to have a parallel with Milton the Monster uh, with the flowers and uh, the gentle monster. And uh, doing a little research, I find that, um, yeah, the Dick Briefer stuff predates Milton the Monster by quite a few years. So I think it's quite possible that um, Hal Seeger uh, read these comics and that was the inspiration for Milton the Monster. So, there you have it. Dick Briefer's Frankenstein. More stuff happening is uh, some of these left hand drawings I've been doing. Now these are not abstract or anything, obviously they're figurative. And um, what I've been doing is uh, using the technique to generate some figures that are unlike my right handed figures. And then I take those and ink them in a more or less uh, representational, illustrational way. So we're going to see what happens with these, see if anyone's interested in these. I call this one Emergence from the Cave. 
probably everyone's felt like that sometime. Hibernation sort of effect. So that's one of the drawings. Um, this is the order I did them in. So emerges from the ca no 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 that's not that's not next. Infinite Horizon. That's coming out of the cave. Thankful suffering. Can you make that out? I guess you could say it was yoga, huh? Here's another one. Struggle. Guy is struggling with a snake. I'll show you the ink drawing of this one. I rendered it to uh, Indian Dancer. You can see the sort of quality you get by drawing with your left hand. Or you can. Ocean Winds, woman. You can see what I did with that. Here's another woman, left handed. Interesting composition. At some point in between all those was Ecstasy Energy which is, I uh, hope, self-explanatory. And the inks, you saw this one. I know, magnificent, isn't it? Aha. Uh -huh. That's one. Here's the uh, Serpent Struggle, as I will probably title it. Hey, that's a guy's butt crack. You gotta be kidding me. This isn't what comic fans want. I'm not sure what I'll call this one. Um, Atlantean girl serves dinner. I don't know. There's the Indian dancer. And you see with this woman I added a bird. She's holding a bird in the hand and there's one tweeting away. So those will be on eBay this week. It's a bold experiment. Flirting with the poorhouse. Now also just in this week another um, book in French, French, I, the death of, I'm not sure what, um, they, my friends over there, I let them use artwork for any of their book covers that they like, and in this case they took one of my oil, um, dome paintings and stuck it on there. So, I'm very pleased. No matter what they do, they send me a copy. What else we got? Oh, um, Script ideas for Hex Magazine. And we have a bunch of these. Don't read them because we don't want you to steal them. The Toy Box, Mr. Coffee Nerves, Breath of Life. Uh, all dealing with paranormal sort of metaphysical uh, story ideas outside the scope of a lot of modern horror. So it's not just horror, but it's also designed to make you think. Now here we are a little further along the road on the Elementus comic. I'm on page 15 now, working from Keith Braun's uh, layouts. Uh, inking and Sharpie marker. Thought you'd be interested in seeing this. It's a page. It's halfway uh, done. I've stuck the blacks in there. and Believe it or not, I use big markers, chisel points, uh, regular big blunt Sharpies, fine point Sharpies. I also use a couple other markers. I use a uh, Pit uh, SX small. Uh, I use a jelly white pen, but enough of that technical shit. Uh, more new stuff this week. Uh, my friend from New Mexico, Harry O. Morris, uh, well known in the HP uh, Lovecraft circles, publisher of Nick Talops, uh, long time uh, Lovecraft fanzine, uh, sent me this book. It's a beautiful hardback little book. You can see the scale and uh, very nicely done, very well printed, a dust jacket, um, basically uh, his, featuring his art. Well, I didn't notice this, Harry O. Morris, A Portfolio. Really spooky picture on the front, and that kind of foretelling, foreboding of what this book is like. Um, you know, I, I knew Harry, we hung out a good bit, and uh, went to some drawing classes and things, and parties together, and there's much more to this guy, of course there is to everyone in a, you know, a way, uh, much more than uh, I really realized how prolific he is, uh, how much stuff he created, how much thought there is behind it. The, heck, the foreword here is by Richard Matheson. You know, I also hope that this book is going to be out in a trade paperback some uh, uh, edition eventually. I think it would be crazy not to do it like that. Uh, list the thing on Amazon and give you worldwide 
um, sales. Um, introductions, uh, Thomas Ligotti is a fellow who helped uh, Harry out a good bit. Here's uh, Forrest J. Ackerman on a, when he was touring the country back in Famous Monsters days. Actually came and um, visited Harry when he was a kid and the family and everything. That's the kind of, kind of thing Ackerman did back then. So basically Harry explains his life and his work um, very nicely, succinctly. It's a fun read. Uh, profusely uh, illustrated with photographs of Harry, his uh, wife, Christine. And look here, we got, what are these, license pictures or mug shots? And he talks about his particular approach to creating work. Um, there's Harry's house. I remember that. Where is it? Right here. Yeah. Now this, this, this house is interesting. It's spooky. It had a... Uh, friend built a tower on. I don't know what they do in the tower. What do you do in the tower, Harry? So anyway, I might have been in the tower. So, uh, and then we move on to the portfolio of work, which is the uh, lion's share of the book. Hey, I get mentioned in here too, Mike Hoffman. Uh, the plates. That's the plates we got. That's the lion's share of the book right there. And uh, Harry's technique is um, part photography, part collage, part uh, photo recombination, darkroom techniques, all sorts of things. And he seems hell-bent on creating these images that are just disturbing. Some people refer to it as dread. Um, this thing of a, a ghost chicken going upstairs, I mean, it's a real photograph of some spot. It's just, it's really striking. So anyway, uh, this is a rainbow printing effect. Harry uses a lot of equipment that is um, uh, HP Lovecraft illustration. Uh, some equipment like a video printer, which I don't know if that's tech exactly obsolete these days. I uh, don't think people use too much stuff like that anymore. Um, anyway, Harry takes photographs. A lot of these are book covers. It gives uh, credit to uh, Our Lord of Flies, Masks, Richard Matheson novels. Um, I don't want to show you everything in here because you got to go out and buy the book. Where can I get the book, Harry? You know, later on the work um, seems to evolve into something markedly different, uh, sort of more sort of geometries and things. So I don't know what kind of programs Harry's using here. But anyway, this um, edition was signed to me by Harry, and um, thanks a lot. The rest of you guys. Go out and get it. I'll stick a link up here uh, to show where you can get it.